everybody. Welcome to Kali Biology. Today for Biology 112, we're going to understand the digestive system. The digestive system is processing food, two main steps. First, we have to break down the food itself into nutrients. That's digestion. Then we have to get those nutrients into the bloodstream. That's absorption. That's what our digestive system does for us. We start with food in our mouth. The mouth begins mechanical digestion with the teeth grinding of the food. We also add saliva from the salivary glands. That begins chemical digestion with the amylase, the enzyme that starts to digest starch. Um, once we have chewed up the food, it's become slick with saliva. We call it the bolus. The bolus is swallowed from the oral cavity or the mouth into the pharynx. The pharynx then leads through muscular action known as peristalsis. We push the food through the esophagus. The esophagus is the tube ultimately to the stomach, to the stomach itself. When food is in the stomach, what we're going to be doing is continuing mechanical digestion by churning that food. We're going to add several chemicals into that churning food. We're going to add pepsin, chemical to digest proteins. We're going to add hydrochloric acid, also helps break down or denature proteins, kills any bacteria that might have come in with our food. The stomach is also lined with a layer of mucus. That's another one of our gastric secretions. The mucus provides a barrier so that the gastric juices themselves don't digest the stomach itself. And there's a hormone that controls all of those secretions. That's gastrin. The term gastro refers to the stomach. So gastrin is the hormone controlling the stomach. Food flows through sphincters, muscle controls, into the small intestine. There are three regions of the small intestine. The first portion, right where it connects to the stomach, is the duodenum, sometimes pronounced duodenum. That's where we get the connections, the ducts, from both the liver and the pancreas. The liver is this brown structure. There's the gallbladder in association with the liver, nice and green. And up under the stomach, this yellow glandular tissue is the pancreas. Both of those provide secretions that duct into the duodenum, the first portion of the small intestine. From the liver, we get bile. Bile is stored in the gallbladder, drips into the duodenum. Bile is a fat emulsifier, helps break down fat. From the pancreas, we get lots of pancreatic secretions, things like trypsin. Trypsin is one that's going to help us continue to break down protein. We get more amylase. Amylase was the same chemical we got from the salivary glands, also breaking down carbohydrates. We get lipase for breakdown of lipids. We get the enzyme nuclease for the breakdown of nucleic acids. We also get from the pancreas bicarbonate. Bicarbonate is a chemical that's going to increase the acidity, very, very acidic from the hydrochloric acid in the stomach. We're going to neutralize that acidity and raise the value to a pH of around 7. The fluid coming out of the stomach is referred to as chyme or chyme. That's going to be highly acidic because of the hydrochloric acid. So the bicarbonate is going to neutralize, raise the pH for that food as it continues through the small intestine. Three regions of the small intestine. That first region where the plugs are is the duodenum, duodenum. Then we get to the jejunum, and then finally the ileum. Duodenum, jejunum, ileum. Those are the three regions of the small intestine. The large intestine itself um, also has a series of regions. Small intestine is called small intestine because of the diameter of the tube. Large intestine is large, but once again, the larger diameter of the tube. Right where the small intestine meets the large intestine, there's a little structure. That structure coming off, it's a blind portion of the tube. That's the appendix. The appendix serves no function in human digestion. The reason we know about the appendix is it become infected. It can inflame, it can enlarge, and we might have to undergo an appendectomy, which is the removal of the appendix. Right where the small intestine meets the large intestine, large intestine is also known as the colon. First portion is the cecum, followed by the ascending region of the colon, transverse region of the colon, descending, then we get this S-shaped sigmoid region, then the final straight region of the large intestine is the rectum, and waste product leaves the intestinal tract via the anus. This structure here represents a single finger-like projection that lines the small intestine. This is an intestinal villi. Villi are going to increase the surface area so we can pull more of the nutrients into the small intestine for absorption. So this is a single villus. These represent this whole structure, individual little bits, 
each of those finger-like projections is a villi, so this represents a section of the small intestine with those intestinal villi sticking in different directions. Let's go ahead and look at a model, a secondary model of digestion. We see the oral cavity, there's our tongue, there are the teeth. Food is macerated, chewed up in the oral cavity, goes into the pharynx, to the esophagus, to the stomach, nice muscular pouch. From the stomach, it goes into the small intestine, all of this is small intestine, duodenum, jejunum, ileum, then into the large intestine, right at the portion of the large intestine, there's the appendix sticking off. We've got the cecum ascending, transverse, actually the transverse piece is missing here, descending, curves up under in an S shape under the small intestine, that's the sigmoid region of the large intestine. This is the straight portion of the rectum, represents the anus. Associated with the digestive system, we also have as accessory structures the liver. Tucked up under the liver is a beautiful green gallbladder. Tucked up under the stomach is a gorgeous pancreas. And just for fun on this model, they added the spleen. Spleen has no digestive function, but it happens to be present for anatomical reference. That's our digestive system.